Lesson One: Stars. Celestial bodies. Celestial bodies are objects that exist in space, outside of Earth's atmosphere. They include a wide range of objects such as stars, planets, moons, asteroids, comets, and galaxies. Here are some examples of celestial bodies. Stars. Stars are massive, glowing balls of gas that emit light and heat. Our sun is a star, and there are billions of other stars in the universe. They come in different sizes, colors, and temperatures. Planets. Planets are large objects that orbit around a star. They are usually spherical in shape. And do not produce their own light. In our solar system, we have eight planets, including Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and a dwarf planet called Pluto. Moons. Moons are natural satellites that orbit around planets. They're smaller than planets and often have rocky or icy surfaces. Earth has just one moon, but other planets in our solar system have multiple moons. For example, Jupiter has over ninety moons. Asteroids. Asteroids are rocky objects that orbit the sun. They're smaller than planets and can vary in size from small boulders to objects several hundred kilometers in diameter. Most asteroids are found in the asteroid belt, located between Mars and Jupiter. Comets are icy bodies that orbit the Sun. They're made up of a mixture of rock, dust, ice, and organic compounds. When a comet gets close to the Sun, the heat causes the ice to vaporize, creating a glowing coma, a cloud of gas and dust, and a tail that can be seen from Earth. Galaxies. Galaxies are vast collections of stars, gas, dust, and other celestial objects held together by gravity. Our Milky Way galaxy is just one of billions of galaxies in the universe. Galaxies come in different shapes and sizes, ranging from spiral galaxies to elliptical galaxies. Stars. Stars are huge balls of gas that produce light and heat. They're scattered throughout the universe and can be found in galaxies like our own Milky Way. Stars come in different sizes, colors, and temperatures. They're formed in giant clouds of gas and dust called a nebulae. Gravity pulls these materials together, causing them to collapse and form a dense core. As the core gets hotter and denser, nuclear fusion begins. Nuclear fusion is a process where hydrogen atoms combine to form helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the form of light and heat. This energy is what makes stars shine. Stars have different colors depending on their temperature. The hottest stars appear blue. Or white, while cooler stars appear red or orange. The color of a star can tell us about its age and size. Stars also have different sizes. Some stars, called dwarf stars, are relatively small and have a lifespan of billions of years. Other stars, called giant or supergiant stars, are much larger and have shorter lifespans. When a star runs out of fuel, it can undergo a spectacular explosion called a supernova. Stars are incredibly far away from us, which is why they appear as tiny points of light in the night sky. The light from stars takes a long time to reach us, so when we look at the stars, we're actually seeing how they looked in the past. Stars are not just beautiful to look at; they also play a crucial role in the universe. They create the heavy elements necessary for planets, like Earth, to form. 
stars also serve as beacons in the vastness of space, guiding astronomers in their exploration and understanding of the universe. The birth of a star. The birth of the star is a fascinating process that begins in giant clouds of gas and dust called nebulae. Here's a step-by-step -step description of how a star is born. Nebula formation. Nebulae are vast regions in space where gas and dust are concentrated, often due to the gravitational pull of nearby stars or the shock waves from a supernova. These nebulae can span hundreds of light years and contain a mixture of hydrogen gas, helium gas and trace amounts of other elements. Nebula compression. The gas and dust in a nebula slowly begin to collapse under the influence of gravity. This can be triggered by external factors such as nearby supernova explosions or the collision of two nebulae. As the cloud collapses, it becomes denser and hotter at its core. Protostar formation The dense core of the collapsing cloud is called a protostar. It continues to contract and heat up as more gas and dust fall into it. The gravitational energy released by the collapsing material is converted into heat energy, causing the temperature at the core to rise. Accretion disk formation. As the protostar forms, a rotating disk of gas and dust called accretion disk also forms around it. The material in the accretion disk slowly swirls inward, falling into the protostar. This process is similar to how water spirals down a drain. Nuclear fusion ignition. When the temperature at the core of the protostar reaches about 10 million degrees Celsius, nuclear fusion begins. Nuclear fusion is a process where hydrogen atoms combine to form helium, releasing a tremendous amount of energy in the form of light and heat. This marks the birth of a star. Main sequence star. Once nuclear fusion starts, the star enters the main sequence phase, where it will spend the majority of its life. The energy produced by the nuclear fusion counteracts the force of gravity, creating a stable equilibrium. The star shines brightly and steadily during this phase. The specific details and timeline of star formation can vary depending on factors such as the mass of the collapsing cloud and the surrounding environment. Higher mass clouds may form more massive stars or lower mass clouds may form smaller stars. Star Features White Dwarf White dwarfs are the remnants of low to medium mass stars. They are very dense, with a mass similar to that of the Sun, but compressed into a much smaller size. They are typically about the size of Earth, but have a mass comparable to that of the Sun. White dwarfs do not produce energy through nuclear fusion like main sequence stars, instead they are slowly cooling down after billions of years. Very hot when they form, with temperatures ranging from 100,000 to 150,000 degrees Celsius. White dwarfs are often surrounded by a shell of gas, called a planetary nebula, which is created when the star sheds its outer layers. Red Giant Red giants are large, cool stars that have exhausted the hydrogen fuel in their cores. As a red giant expands, it becomes much larger than its original size. They are red in colour due to their relatively low surface temperature. Red giants are hundreds to thousands of times larger than the sun. They are much brighter than the sun and can easily be observed in the night sky. Red giants eventually shed their outer layers, creating a beautiful nebula and leaving behind a white dwarf. Orange Giants Orange Giants are similar to Red Giants, but they have a slightly higher surface temperature. 
They are larger and brighter than the sun, but not as massive as red giants. Orange giants have a distinctive orange colour due to their surface temperature. They also eventually shed their outer layers, leaving behind a white dwarf. Blue Supergiants Blue supergiants are massive stars that are much larger and hotter than the sun. They are among the most luminous stars in the universe. Blue supergiants have a high surface temperature which gives them a blue colour. They have a short lifespan compared to smaller stars, typically only a few million years. Blue supergiants end their lives in a dramatic supernova explosion, leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole. Blue hypergiant. Blue hypergiants are extremely rare and among the most massive stars in the universe. They're even larger and hotter than blue supergiants. Blue hypergiants have a very high surface temperature which gives them the blue colour. They are highly luminous and commit thousands to millions of times more energy than the sun. Blue hypergiants have a relatively short lifespan and end their lives in a supernova explosion. Red supergiant Red supergiants are massive stars that are larger but cooler than blue supergiants. They have a very large radius, often hundreds to thousands of times that of the sun. Red supergiants have a red colour due to their relatively low surface temperature. They are highly luminous and their colour can be clearly seen in the night sky. Red supergiants also end their lives in supernova explosions, leaving behind a neutron star or a black hole.